Hello there. Welcome. How are you today? Hmm? Well, it's that time once again where we open up. Yeah, we open up the Dylan Rounds case to analyse. We are continuing on from the previous video. So welcome if you're currently here in the live chat. If you did miss the previous video, make sure to check it out after this one. There will be a link down below in the pinned comment section. OK, so what are we exactly looking at? We're looking at the, the next post by Justin Rounds. OK, looking at his tone of voice now. Has it changed? Has it diffused? Has it got more aggressive? That's the whole point, right? And see if there's any other updates, because from the looks of it, Candice Cooley said updates are coming today on the whole EquiSearch, okay? That investigation most recent. Bear in mind, time zone difference. By the time this video is live, Candice probably would have revealed whatever, okay? So take that into mind. UK time is ahead of US time. So by the time I see it, it'll probably be tomorrow morning if I cover a video on it, okay? Now, there seems to be a contrast between what Justin Round says and, in a way, Candice Cooley. Almost like a roller coaster, once again. So, we'll transition on over to Facebook shortly and have a look at the latest post. One thing to take in mind, first of all, is one individual did leave a comment on my previous video claiming that Justin Rounds deleted his angry rant, his post, as what we covered yesterday. That could well be true, but you need to remember one thing. As of speaking up to now, that post still remains on Justin Round's Facebook profile. It was also posted originally on the Find Dylan Round's page, but that one has been taken down, okay? But it's still available on Justin Round's profile. Does that make sense? It could still be taken down maybe a few hours on from now. Still a possibility. You can share your thoughts down below to why you think it was removed off the Find Dylan Rounds page and who you think did it. Was it a mod? Was it Candice Cooley? Did someone reach out to Justin and say, hey, you got to retract this because it's making the page look bad? Because it's one of those things where, you know, if you go against... TOS or you do something bad on a certain platform, there can be consequences at times, right? You can get reported. Maybe even the page could get shut down, just like YouTube channels. So the Find Dylan Rounds page, you don't want that being deleted because you know that's where all the information is gathered. That's where all the key people communicate, I guess. So they must have took it down before it gets reported for threatening behavior, right? But the original one still remains on Justin's profile, just to be clear, right? So with that aside, let's move on to Facebook now and see the latest post by Justin. Right, so here we are. So Justin's post is a little bit above, but I wanted to look at Candice Cooley's response to a question as it is all tied in with what I'm about to talk about, okay? And you'll see the contrast. Rita Taylor, you would have seen that account last night in last night's video when she was asking questions with Justin Rounds about the grain shed photo, the nighttime one, okay, saying, when was it taken? She didn't get a reply at the time. So she's asked another question this time, saying, Candice, are there any updates on the search with EquiSearch this week? Okay, we've heard about EquiSearch. Candice Cooley made like an announcement post just recently, a couple of days ago, saying they're coming out, assisting us. And that's where that photo was taken of a wash. And Candice Cooley did confirm it as a wash they were in. Don't know exactly which one, but it was a wash. So that's the confirmation, okay? But this, regarding the EquiSearch assistance, what does Candice Cooley have to say in response? Well, let's check. So you've got some comments there. Just let load up. So she instantly replies and says, we will be updating tomorrow. And that was 13 hours ago. So I don't know where this update will come from. 
It could be on the Fine Dylan Rounds Facebook page. It could be some kind of news report or interview on a YouTube channel, maybe the mob crew. Because you've got to take in mind, just recently, the mob crew has been out there as well. You've seen some of his live videos or so. I think it was either yesterday or the day before, he had a, a live video out on the road saying, this is day five of searching and assisting, looking for Dylan. So that will be interesting that maybe with them both cooperating with one another, they might do a follow-up interview too. So be on the lookout for that, okay? And also be on the lookout for this supposed update by Candice Cooley, okay? Which should be coming later tonight. Is there anything else? Doesn't look like it. Guess it's just keeping it very short for now, so not too much is revealed. Right. Right, so that's it for that comment section post. Let's just keep on going down because the post is here. Here we go. Just in rounds, 11 hours ago. So this would have been after his rant, okay? So he says, What an amazing group of people I met this week. Twiller, Tony and Danny from Equo Search came out to Lucin to help find Dylan. Total strangers travelled thousands of miles to stay out in the desert and work from sun up to sun down to help total strangers find their son. These people are the best of the best. I'm forever grateful. The technology they brought is amazing. Thank you. So as you can see, Justin Rounds appears very calm once again. Quick change of emotions that can happen. Now I don't know if anyone stepped in to cool him down. I know last night Ty Corbin came in to the live chat and was like, hey, we all need to try and communicate with Justin to calm him down, make him remind him about, you know, being a family man and you know, having responsibilities and stuff and not throwing it away over some negative aggression, right? So it looks like something's happened, maybe some kind of intervention. It could have been Candice Cooley. Candice might have cooled him down, possibly, because if they're both out there with EquiSearch, you know, possibility. Um, I don't know how it, you know, how it was diffused in the past, like when Justin was willing to go to Montello with that hostage situation with Dylan. He ended up calming himself down there, so it's happened once again. So, obviously people have the breaking points and all of that, and there's other factors going on, but it seems like things have cooled down, and arguably very quickly, don't you think? So who knows what will happen next, but from just the tone of this like little small paragraph, you can quite clearly see Justin, despite the pain, the frustration and all of the kinds of emotions, he's still able to look past that and acknowledge um, in a positive way what some humans have done, such as EquiSearch, considering the distance as well. I don't know if you remember, but in Heavy D's video, Candice Cooley and Justin both kind of agreed that they were kind of... Um, had no hope for humanity, but with some of the people coming in, supporting the Dylan Rounds case, um, buying the seeds, doing the posters, spreading awareness and all of that, as well as the search and rescue teams, it's given them hope for humans in a positive way. So that's kind of good, in a way. Um, you can leave your thoughts down below to what you think of EquiSearch. I've not really looked at too much into them. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's not much more I can say. It, it is what it is, as you see on there. And it says they brought technology, so I um, don't know exactly what, because as for the drone, Candice Cooley and Justin were in possession of it anyway when the Diesel Brothers came in to pilot it. Though, from what I remember, I might be wrong, correct me if I am, but with the mob crew also being out there, he said something about piloting a drone. I believe. And I have seen the mob crew use, well, Chris, use a drone in the past. So maybe they used a full spectral drone once again. And EquiSearch were there present to be able to analyse it quicker. Or 
that had additional technology. Let me know your thoughts. What technology do you think they used? Do you think they brought additional stuff and do you think it was effective? Let me know. So there's a photo here. What's that? Lost is not alone. Search and recovery in loving memory of Laura Miller. Midwest, I don't know what that's about. But let's just check these comments out from Justin's post just to see if anyone has said anything in regards to Justin's previous outburst. We might as well whilst we're here. Natalie says, constantly praying for your family, Justin. Diana says, I'm so thankful for the good people in the world. I'm praying they find Dylan. Alethea says, praying for they help you get the answers family deserves. Prayers for Dylan. Okay. Jason says, did you find him or find a good direction to keep looking? Good question. So, Justin responds saying, no, we didn't find him. I was just thanking them for working so hard all week. I don't think they are done analysing all the pictures. Hmm. Bit of a roller coaster, right? You know, with that photo posted by Justin yes, yesterday and that sudden outburst, it's as if, like, he heard of something, he got a lead, he's received information, and then that's what's caused him to act out. And yet here he's saying, no, we've not found him. No. And that's it, short answer. Let me just say one thing now. I'm not going to write it off. Justin could well have received information, important leads regarding Dylan. Maybe finding him or finding a new direction. And that's what caused him to get angry and demonstrate that outburst, that short burst of negativity. And then maybe he was restrained, he came to his senses, or even Candice coolly stepped in and said, hey, you got to cool down, remember? This is our son, this is the case. We've got to try and keep things under control, considering how things have gone. Now, as you remember, Candice Cooley has rejected points in the past, saying, no, that's not been found. No, the key fob hasn't. No, the gun hasn't. But it was found, but she couldn't say anything at the time because the police advised her not to. So maybe the same's happened here. You saw a small glimpse that there might be a new development within, but Justin can't reveal it yet. But Candice Cooley said she will provide an update tonight. So ultimately, I guess we'll find out from what Candice Cooley has had to say. If she says as well, no, we've not found anything yet, then that kind of ties in with Justin. But if she says, we have found some stuff, but we can't say at the moment, then that ties in with Justin rejecting anything here, but demonstrating an outburst the day before. You see what I'm saying? Because you know what? It can come to anything. Even if it was like a surprise party for someone, a surprise birthday party, some people find it difficult to keep a secret, whether it be out of excitement, nerves enthusiasm, adrenaline, many different feelings. Some people can keep it quiet, others can't. Now, with Candice and Justin, Justin seems a bit more, um, what would you call it? Maybe not as controlled as Candice Cooley. Candice Cooley, I know some people have argued saying she's more cold, she's more straight-faced, uh, maybe Justin is a bit more emotional. I don't know, there's different ways of interpreting it, okay? I'll leave it open and leave it just there. So, let me know your thoughts to what you think about this. You know, from what we saw previously to what we're hearing now, that they've not found him, Dylan has not been found. Do you think that's the truth, or do you think they're keeping quiet for obvious reasons? Let's see if there's any other little comments below. Jason says, Justin Rounds, thanks bud, keep up the good work. If you need some more help out there, let me or my wife know. If there is any way that our side by sides can help you look. Lou says, prayers for that, he'll be found. Tracy says, it's nice to see you all getting the help you should have had from the LE. Yeah. David Jones Jr. says, awesome. Now, um, was David Jones present in the live chat last night in my video? I can't remember. I know the name was brought up, but I don't know if they actually left a comment. I know that Joy, Joy whoever, left a comment. 
in the chat and was present, so that was good. But I don't know about David Jones, so let me know. Mark says, continue prayers. Kathy says, prayers. Sharon says, many of us thankful. Yeah, amazing group of people. James says, yes, we are all strangers, but many of us feel Dylan is a part of our lives and the freedom and justice we all crave for this lad. Love, hope, faith and prayers from Scotland. Now, once again, I'm going to be realistic. I'll show you my point of view. Other YouTubers have, you know, showed some kind of um, connection with Dylan, even Salty Pancakes at some point. I personally don't have a connection with Dylan. Some people have kind of joked around saying I look like Dylan, but I don't really have a connection with Dylan. And I don't really relate to Dylan either. I don't have an emotional connection to him, but I still think it's worth looking at the case, the mystery, to try and solve it, or at least make some sense out of it. And slash or try and tie up loose ends as we go along. And I'll say... A very, very good example, which did occur just recently, kind of mirroring the level of cooperation, like with the Kenny Veach case, shout out to Ty Corbin, and also Weaver, or Weather, can't remember his name, I think it's W-E-E-T-H-E-R or something, that both confirmed, alongside some other viewers as well, that, remember that white cross in Montello near the landing strip? that it was actually to do with a memorial because some helicopter with firefighters crashed and I guess people passed away or people got seriously hurt. So it was more of a memorial, okay? I didn't know about that originally, but people provided information. It helped clear up that little mystery. To other people, it might not seem like anything, but to outsiders, people who aren't from the area and see it are probably gonna think, oh, what's this all about? So it just helps clear the, up the confusion, right? And another good example as well is when looking at the wash, the 2017 one in Montello, where you had that flooding over the railway tracks and um, it breaking away the ground. Ty Corbin stepped in as well and uh, cleared that up saying, yeah, we had a flood 2017, you know, it was quite rough, but it was fixed and resolved in the end. And so did some other viewers as well that knew of that. So that is that is useful. I like that level of um cooperation if you want to call it that so hopefully we can continue to do that as we go along and as i said once again not everyone has to agree but when it comes to looking at this case or any other case when it comes to analyzing or questioning you're better not being attached to someone when looking at it because not always but sometimes if you feel connected or attached it might cloud your ju judgment it might make you a little biased it might make you a little impulsive you know doesn't happen all the time and it's not going to happen to everyone but there's a possibility so that's why i just i just go in look at it and do the best i can to cover it or at least make noise so the case doesn't die out because that can always take place you look on tiktok the dylan rounds case is virtually quiet you know there was a burst in the past, but it's gone quiet since. I uploaded the odd video, but there isn't enough time to be making TikTok videos alongside full-on YouTube videos. You know what I'm saying? I can only do one or the other. Anyway, let's continue. Gary says, that's awesome. Glad to hear. Holly says, sure hope the footage that was taken will turn something up. Prayers for you all. May you be blessed with answers and you're in desperate need of. So yeah, interesting point about the footage. So, you remember what, um, we'll just scroll back up to where it was mentioned, if I can find it there. So, although they didn't find Dylan, the same that they still need to analyse pictures. And you might, you might be like, well, what pictures? Well, this is reminding me of the whole situation of the spectral drone. You remember that one, where money was raised so they could use it. Now, the Diesel brothers have operated it already, if you remember, and that was maybe like a week ago. And don't know what the results were. We never heard of. Mm, I don't know when we'll hear about it. But maybe they didn't find anything then. So that's what encouraged Equisearch to step in. Or maybe they did find something, but they needed Equisearch to come in anyway to finalise, to take a closer look themselves, right? I mean, um, if they've got their own technology, they might have their own drone. Who knows? But... 
as we've heard previously, that drone can take photos and can take several of them. And then with the software, what they have, whether they do it on site or when they return back to their headquarters or wherever they're working at, then they can assess the photos and ultimately see if there's anything of interest, right? So you could still be like, well, what about the grain shed though? Like, did he use the drone on that or was it mainly the wash? I'd probably say it was probably the wash area because the Diesel Brothers have used the drone over the grain shed and around that area beforehand. So I guess Equisearch specifically looked at the wash because that's what Candice Cooley wanted. But then again, you know, you can share your thoughts down below and, you know, I'm sure we'll get an update at some point. I'm sure we will. To what extent, that's unknown of, but we'll see how things play out, right? Okay. Anything else? Um, prayers from Texas. I live in Texas. Yeah, there seems to be a fair few um, Texas people. Do you call it Texas people? Texans that watch uh, look into the Dane Rounds case. So that's uh, interesting. That's good. Praying from, yeah. I'm so grateful for the help that you're getting. Yeah, it's a big step up compared to, you know, previous situations with like the LE using these other groups who are quite helpful. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it just basically people thanking them and stuff, saying thank you. Just want to see. I don't want to make, I don't want to miss out anything, right? Just doing rounds. Are you able to tell us when the night picture of the tool shed was taken. If not, I understand. That was 47 minutes ago, so I don't think Justin would have responded yet. So probably later. Oh, is that it? Yeah, okay. So there we go. Okay, so, you know, you saw the Facebook post, uh, the response by Candice Cooley, keeping it very short, saying update will be provided later on. Could be around about now, but it's too late for me to check. I'll do it tomorrow morning, okay? Could it be anything important? I mean, put aside Justin Round's response about like the same thing. What do you think? Do you think they have found something? Do you think they found Dylan or just a, a new bit of evidence, a new lead which goes on to elsewhere? Let me know your thoughts in the live chat. And uh, yeah, now with Justin Rounds, He's cooled down, he seems calm again, positive, which is good, obviously. I know some people will be relieved, maybe some were worried, thinking he would lash out, considering the stress and everything going on, you know. But I think it's okay for now, from the looks of it. But, as you saw, he said they didn't find Dylan, but photos are still being analysed. So... Maybe there's still a bit of time in between from now till then. They might find something, they might not. Um, is this ultimately the final push for Dylan before winter? Or are they going to do something else after this? I don't know. Mm. It does feel a bit like a roller coaster situation at the moment. Kind of on a cliffhanger. Are you going to suddenly drop and it's going to be oh, not much to it? Or is it going to rise and rise because there's been something new? I guess that's the question. Now, we're not done yet. We might as well return back to the grain shed, the nighttime one. And I think we'll return back to the photo itself as I narrate over it because there's some unfinished business, okay? So it appears, I think it was after my video, Salty Pancakes did an analysis himself of the grain shed. Or maybe it was before my video, I can't remember. Um, did it with the Shack Lady, I think did it with Brookie, Ranger, uh, and then Bella V and maybe some other people here and there, bits and bobs, right? Um, and, you know, they were talking about different things, they were questioning, oh, when's the photo taken, this and that. I think from most of the opinions last night in my video, it does seem to have been taken most recently. And, you know, I can understand that because, you know, you look at the left-hand side, you look at all the items that are scattered about. Some of those could have been used with that Heavy D interview. One thing to take in mind, though, you couldn't quite see the chair 
Heavy D was sat on. He might have well have been sat on that white one, but in terms of Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds, they were sat on, I don't know what you'd call it, like lawn chairs. Let me show you a quick picture now so we can do a, a comparison. So just visualize that on the left-hand side briefly. Okay, now let's transition over to the Heavy D photo. So here we are looking at the photo of the Heavy D interview, which was a couple of weeks ago. You look at those two chairs, they seem to be identical. They appear to be lawn chairs. Credit to the individual that raised that point in the first place. Can't remember who it was exactly. I don't know if it was Glitter Galaxy or someone else in the live chat at the time. But yeah, there's a chance that those two chairs were provided by Heavy D. Because as we've seen, Heavy D has provided assistance before with equipment, um, rope, uh, drinks, food, vehicles, the lot. And I'm sure chairs are in his disposal infantry too. You can see it's, it holds like um, a drink as well. So I just wanted to bring that up. And the main reason is, is when you look at these two chairs, okay, do those two chairs look like they belong in the grain shed? When you look back at the grain shed, whether it be before or after, such as the recent one by Justin Rounds or the old one by Pancakes, can you see any lawn chairs inside? Yes or no? The only chair that seems to show up is this white one here, which could be metallic, and then that wooden one there, and that's about it. The table back there, that wooden table isn't in sight there, is it? Though possibly, depending the height of the tripod, you know, I'm sure they probably used a camera, proper professional camera to record the videos, I'm sure. And they would have had a tripod. I don't know what type of tripod. Is it a gorilla tripod? One of those small grippy ones? And if it was a small one and it didn't have extended legs, possibility, but that table was used and the tripod was put on top of it just for that height elevation. I've done the same exact thing because my tripod is kind of small as well. That's why I have it on a ledge when I do my videos, right? Makes sense. Anyway, we're looking at this spot. Is there anything else going on? Anything else of interest? Well, as you see on the ground level, you can see some cans scattered about, mainly beer cans, right? Um, in the corner back there, there is a shovel. It's out of focus, but there is a shovel or a spade, whatever you call it, in the ground. Don't know if it was used, if it was used to create the hole. As for the hole, if you're wondering which one, the hole back here, right? Candice Cooley is just in front of it. The hole is, I think, just back there, if I'm correct in saying. Now, I don't know how far away she is from it because hopefully she doesn't like lean back. Could you imagine if she leaned back and the chair went down the bloody hole? She'd, her legs would fly up in the air. Obviously that didn't happen, but it would have been a bit awkward. But, you know, just looking at this, as I said, there is more unfinished business, but that's for the body language video, okay? You look at the shelf in the background, right? This might help explain something, possibly. Right. Let's take this in mind. Hmm. Interesting. It looks like Salty Pancakes is before the photo on the left. Salty Pancakes, this one, this photo is older than... This one by Justin Rounds. Why do I say that? It all comes down to the bookshelf. Okay? This one. You remember it? This brown bookshelf? Look at the bottom shelf on the left-hand side. You can make out there's like an object. Some kind of square box, maybe. Some kind of packaging. Can you see it? Just about, right? Remember that. Compare that to the photo by Justin Rounds on his Facebook post. Doesn't seem to be anything there. Looks like it's missing, right? No box, nothing. Yet, there's a box here. Now, we mentioned that before, and it could be like 
So what? It still doesn't prove which one's which because we still don't know the relevancy date of the one of the left, left photo. Well, let's bring this one back into play. We know this was like a week or two ago because it's on Heavy D's channel when the interview took place, when it was uploaded. Give or take maybe a few days because, you know, recording it, uploading it and doing other projects could be one to two weeks ago, roughly speaking, right? Does that make sense? One to two weeks ago, this screenshot as part of the footage, this is definitely newer than Salty Pancake's photo. I think that's quite obvious, right? Are you following me up to this point? Because it's quite important. So with that in mind, let's really focus in on is there anything present here or is there anything not present here which was originally present in Pancake's photo? Yes, the bookshelf. Remember, top left shelf, you got a box. Below it, you got the white box. Let's check it on Pancake's. Yep, you got the brown box followed by the white box. Well, what about the bottom shelf though, the third one? There is nothing. I know it's out of focus, but you can clearly see there is no outline, there is no box, there is no object whatsoever on the third, on the bottom shelf on the left-hand side. Can you agree with that in the chat? Yes? Let's compare it to pancakes once again. You can clearly see there is a box of some sort on the bottom shelf on the left-hand side. Let's now compare it to Justin Round's photo, which was recently posted on his profile, because this could help us understand when it was taken. So this was one to two weeks ago, and it was missing from the shelf we go to Justin Round's photo and we look at the shelf. There's nothing there, right? It's missing. Nothing there whatsoever. So, Pancakes is older, followed by this one, and then possibly this is the most recent one. Now, I know some people have already said, yeah, it was probably taken late at night after the search was done and so, but... It's not been like fully confirmed by the likes of Justin or Candice yet. So we're bringing this photo into play. You could kind of scale it in terms of the time, the timeline. Does that make sense? Now, we've got to throw in another factor just to understand. And this is from Christopher Lloyd himself. Now, who is Christopher Lloyd? I'll be honest, don't know too much about him, but I do remember back in the past, there was confusion and misinformation spread by Salty Pancakes, who originally thought that the police investigation was going to Christopher Lloyd's property, but in fact, it was going to uh, Jim Brenner's former place of living in Montello, the burnt down trailer. You remember all of that. And then most recently, when I was talking about the white van in the middle of uh, Lucin, which was randomly parked up, looked like it was stalking those two hikers, if you remember that video I did, but I didn't remember the name of Christopher Lloyd at the time, so apologies about that. I know Moonshine Dragon told me off like a naughty little boy. I did have detention time. I did have to stay back for two hours, but I learned my lesson. I've done my homework, and now I remember Christopher Lloyd. So yes, I'm a good little boy now. Don't beat me up. No whipping, not yet. Okay. So... What Christopher Lloyd said in my previous live video in the chat was, it's almost becoming a tourist place, this grain shed. Now, I did ask him, roughly, how many people do you think have visited this place? And he said, I don't know at this point. So that could be several people. Or it might be the same people, but going multiple times. The reason why I say that is, if multiple people have come here since they might have moved things around. You know what I'm saying? They might have even taken things away. You never know. Anything is possible. So it's just thrown that in as well to explain why certain objects may have been moved around. But the way I see it, that white chair could have been there because of Heavy D sitting on it. 
the table over there, I'm not sure why that was moved and put in that direction. If the table was at the side, just, well, I don't know. Some, well, hmm, you know, Heavy D, he does have multiple cameras and different camera angles. There might have been one camera set up on a tripod on that table facing Heavy D when Heavy D was asking questions. And then there might have been another camera set up behind Heavy D pointing at these two. Does that make sense? So a camera could be on the right hand side next to Cooley, which is out of shot facing Heavy D. And this angle is facing by the side of Heavy D facing directly at the parents. That's the way I see it. So I'll just say it one more time in a very summarized tone. Because of this bookshelf back here and it missing that object, we know this is most recent. Do you think this explains the timing of when this photo was taken? Because that's also missing an object on the bottom shelf. And that the oldest photo out of the three is Salty Pancakes. Because you can see the box down there. Do you agree with that? And on top, as a follow-up question, if you think that way, do you believe the photo on the left-hand side now, just in rounds, when it was uploaded on um, Facebook, that was the day, the night, when it was taken as well? Let me know your thoughts. Now, the next thing, what we've got to look at, uh, you could say it's a rumour, you could say it's a theory, an idea, but... It seemed as if Salty Pancakes, when he was giving his opinion, he was saying it looked like a setup. You know. So, with these items in Pancakes footage, which was a while ago now, with it all being neatly organised and put to the side, kept in a nice order, right? It's spacious. And then this almost being a complete mess. It's like, why? I still think the Heavy D interview could play a reason could play a part and they forgot to put the stuff back. That is a possibility because it had happened recently. But if it was staged, why? Why would they stage it? To make it seem more serious? Is Salty Pancakes inferring that Justin Rounds created this scene to make it look more serious than it is? To make it seem like something else has happened since. To make the whole look bigger than it was originally. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Uh, one point Salty, uh, Salty Pancakes brought up was... Even though it's not officially a crime scene... And the LE never cornered it off or taped it off... Candice Cooley, you know was firm that it should be a crime scene. And if that's the case, Salty Pancake said, well, why why move objects around inside if it is a crime scene? Isn't it tampering with evidence, ruining it? And you know what? I can kind of understand that. And you can share your own thoughts down below in the comment section. If this is a crime scene, if it's an important place where things have taken place, right? Uh, then you shouldn't be going in there and touching stuff or moving things around. Now, Salty Pancakes did go himself. So does that make him a hypocrite? Unless he didn't touch anything, didn't move anything whatsoever, then I guess it's not as bad. Um, I'm just trying to think now. Someone said that Justin Rounds said it was okay for Pancakes or Kurt to go on into the grain shed, it was welcomed. I don't know if that's completely true or not. If anyone else can confirm it, feel free to do so. Um, I know we've heard it before about Ty and Lance when they were out in Montello searching for Dylan. They were nowhere near the land of Dylan. They were in Montello, but still looking. And at the time, Ty Lance said Justin Rounds approved of it. In recent time, as we heard, Candice Cooley wasn't aware what Justin said so she said she was going to tell him and um, ask what's up interestingly it kind of tied in with 
time lengths go in separate ways, but that was for other reasons. So it's more of a coincidence, the timing, right? Um, but yeah, um, I don't know if Candice will respond. So like, if she does do another interview, is she going to bring it up about Justin, whether he still encourages people to go out searching or not? Because as we heard just very recently with this EquiSearch investigation, when they came over, they didn't want anyone else interfering. So, but you got to take in mind, Thailand's have been searching in Montello, so they're not interfering really. They might, you know, you could argue and say they're in the wrong area, but they're doing their own thing. They're trying their best. So it's not the end of the world. We can talk about the cadaver dogs shortly and the donations for that. Is it still practical? We'll get to that shortly. But let's tie back to the grain shed situation and what Salty Pancakes was referring to in terms of it being staged. It's like, well, if you know it's a crime scene, then you know you shouldn't touch anything. A counterpoint I will put across to counter what Salty Pancakes has said just a suggestion, is that, yes, you will get crime scenes, but they're only valid for a certain length of time, right? Also, you've got to take in mind, this was never officially a crime scene, so it wasn't as restrictive, right, in terms of access. But if we just use a quick on-the-spot example of a crime scene in a city, a town centre, it could be a shop, it could be an elevator, it could be a park, it's taped off, you're not allowed to go through it at this moment in time. Hell, I'm going to use an example myself in real life. Um, there was a cut through under a bridge, which goes through like a little forest. That was cornered off as a crime scene for almost a week. You couldn't walk through it. It was cornered off. Police surveillance, 24-7, they had the forensics in, they were looking for a missing person, the remains were supposedly in that area, so obviously no one was allowed access in that space of time. After that, once they finished and conducted it, they wrapped it up and you could walk through. You could dig a hole in the ground if you really wanted to and there would be no trouble. You wouldn't be causing a scene, you wouldn't be ruining the case because the case has been closed. Now, is that different to this case? Arguably, yes, because it's still ongoing. But as said, this was never treated as an official crime scene in the first place by L.E. But on top of that, enough time has passed since, hasn't it? It's been a few months by now. And for most part of it, you don't get crime scenes which last for months, do you? It gets to a certain point where it might become a cold case. They might wrap it up. They might say, right, this place is done with. We've completed our investigation here. Look at um, Jim Brenner's former place of living, the burnt down trailer. You could probably go back there now and take an object away or just walk around it and you won't get in trouble because they wrapped up the investigation of that place back then. You remember? They said they extensively searched, they used sniffer dogs, they used ground penetrating equipment and they found nothing, supposedly. So if you used to go there now, it wouldn't be a crime scene. You wouldn't be causing any problems. So could the same apply here with the grain shed? Despite it arguably being an important place and significant evidence found, if it's been found, if it's been taken away and analysed, and that's the most important part, and there is nothing else left in the grain shed, then there shouldn't be an issue to move items around at this point in the case. That's the way I see it. Now, if and this is an alternative darker theory, tying in with salty pancakes. If it was supposedly a crime scene, but in their minds it wasn't and it never was, then that's probably why they moved things around because they know they wouldn't get in trouble. But at the same time, maybe they purposely moved it in such a position to make it seem like something has happened. You know, to make it, to make it more important. I don't know. It's a weird one. I'll give you my personal opinion. It's it's like what I said about the whole expiry of it being a crime scene and not, right? Do you know what I said just before? All that long-winded talk. That's basically what I think, right? I don't think it's a setup. I think it's more to do with Heavy D and his interview, and that's why the stuff is moved about. As for the hole itself, that still remains the same. If it is a bit damp or wet, that's most likely because there's a hole in the roof and water has dripped through, and that's about it. 
Now, one thing I do want to say very quickly, because it is important, that white bag on the left-hand side there, can you see, that was present in Pancake's footage. I looked back, I double-checked afterwards the next day, and it was it was more in the corner. So that didn't disappear, it was just moved slightly. Okay, just wanted to re, um, just confirm that. So, for the most part of it, not too much is missing. It's more that items have been moved about. And that's probably why people think it's almost like setting it up, creating a scene, making it seem more interesting. But if that was really the case and motive behind Justin or Candice, it's like, well, at this point, is anyone going to really believe it and fall for it? You know, they've already seen footage of the grain shed. People have already seen footage of the outer side of the grain shed. Like when I saw Pancake's video and the glory glor glor and individual, that woman too. When I was looking at it at the time, I was like, wait, this has been searched, right? You know, they've gone through the dirt mound, haven't they? They've gone through the other ground around, right? Yes? No? It literally looks the same. It doesn't look like it has been searched. Now, obviously, it probably was to an extent, but it didn't look any different, really. The only thing that gave it away was Jim's missing trailer and the grain truck, right? And Dylan's truck as well. That was it. That was really it that stood out, that was different. And that's to be expected, but... As for the ground, it just didn't look like it was touched. And don't get me started about that dirt mound. Like, has there been an update since regarding that dirt mound? You know, has Candice Cooley given an update? I don't know. I've not really seen it. If you have, feel free to leave a comment down below. All I remember from last time in the interview, whichever one it was, I think it might have been on the mob crew, all she said was, yeah, you see the dirt mound, you see the weeds growing on top and uh, grown through in the roots. Yeah, that's not been disturbed. But, you know, even though we, we did dig it up, we did dig it up, yeah, we did look through. Um, no, but it hasn't been disturbed. What? That's all I remember, because that's, that's, all, that's the last thing I heard from Candice, and it made no sense whatsoever. And once again... Is one of those things where Ellie, can you trust them? Did, did they did they do a thorough job, Box Elder County specifically? Did they look deep enough or not? Because if they didn't, it might make you question the whole area. And that might be the explanation to why they brought the drone in and used it over the grain shed and surrounding area by the Diesel Brothers and then proceeded onwards to the wash. Because maybe they too doubted the LE and how much they searched. Now, leave your thoughts about the dirt mound. Do you think it's still relevant to talk about now or do you think it's um, a closed case with the mound and we're moving on to other areas of focus now? Let me know. Is there anything else within that grain shed? Anything of importance? I know some people were saying that it looked a bit damp, the wall or something. It looked a bit wet in uh, Justin's photo, the dark one. You've got to take in mind the lighting as well. But also the colouring of it, you see it's it's rusted, it's a different colour. And in some areas it's like black. I don't know why it might be the metal itself, the quality of it. It might have been a patched job, it might be a stain, who knows. But it doesn't look wet there. And people did reply back to, I think, Glitter Galaxy's comments on, um, on a different platform regarding when did it last rain and people have said it's been very dry since. So it's just worth taking into mind. So hopefully I mentioned enough here. Hopefully I've not left anything out. Just wanted to like, you know, compare and with this hole. Now if this photo, which it most likely was, with this photo being taken very recently at night. What other reason? What would be the motive? What's the point returning back here to take a photo of it in the dark? Is it to say, hey, I'm here searching? Is it a caption to describe the outcome? 
Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you my thoughts right now. So tying it in, taking it, mind what other people have said. You know, when Justin said about, oh, you'll be meeting God before the rest of us. That probably means judgment, probably means the death penalty, more likely, um, because it, it looks like that in Utah, they do allow the death penalty. So maybe Justin Rounds might receive that and maybe Don Haley as well. So that's probably what Justin Rounds is referring to. Now, why would you leave that caption under or on top of this photo taken? Well, Justin probably took this photo at night because they were searching all throughout the day. So it was late at night by the time they finished. Justin was leaving or passing by the area and decided to take the photo to say, yes, we're out here searching and stuff. But I think this photo ties more with the caption and the reason behind it, the whole death penalty, the whole judgment day, the whole those two are going to die and pay for what they've done. And this photo was used because this is the same spot where Dylan might have been killed, right? So it's like, yeah, you see, this is the location where Dylan got hurt, got attacked, got killed. And it'll also be symbolising what's going to happen to you as well, Don and Jim, maybe. That's, that's, that's how you could interpret it. Um, but yeah, there's only so much I can say. There's only so much you can say about a still photo, right? Um, and then the whole hair, which isn't that big. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Don't want to drag on too much, right? Hopefully that just explains that and ties any loose ends or any bits of information or photos I missed out to include in the previous video. Let me know your thoughts on Salty Pancakes analysis of the grain shed, this new photo. Do you agree with what he says about it being staged, some kind of setup? Do you agree with uh, the Shack Ladies analysis of the grain shed as well? Or do you disagree with different ones? Let me know your thoughts down below. Um, anything else? As for the wash and those photos, as I said, Canis Cooley said it was a wash they were in with Equa Search, and that's the photo, and that, you know, the depth of it is quite deep and steep and tall, so that's to take into mind. Um, and yeah, as I said, there could well be an update right now. Could be, yes, we found new stuff, we're looking at photos right now, we've got another search plan, something else is going to happen, or it could be we've hit a bit of a dead end once again. I don't know because I'm saying this earlier on, okay? So maybe shit will go down when this is live, but I'll just have to wait and see till then, okay? So thanks for watching. Hopefully this video wasn't too repetitive and hopefully you were able to internalize it with Justin. Do you think he truly has calmed down from what we saw the day before? And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Good night for now. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.